Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Nishit Kumar with the midday news. The headlines. 38 union ministers visiting Jammu and Kashmir in batches from today to disseminate information about government policies for overall development of the union territory. NIA registers case against DSP Davinder Singh of Jammu and Kashmir police. Two new ministers inducted in the Council of Ministers in Assam and in sports Vinesh Fogat wins gold medal at the Rome Ranking Series event in Rome. Sanya Mirza and her Ukrainian partner Nadia Kichenok win the women's doubles title of the WTA International Trophy. Thirty-eight union ministers will visit Jammu and Kashmir over a week in batches beginning today. They will undertake extensive tour of the districts across sixty different locations. The objective of the visit is to disseminate information about the importance of the government policies with regard to overall development of the Jammu and Kashmir and its people, along with steps taken in this direction in the last five months. The ministers will interact with the people to educate them about the schemes. projects being implemented to be implemented by their ministries in J and K the outreach program will cover five themes these are rapid development after president's rule from june 2018 and after reorganization in august 2019 100% coverage of 55 beneficiary oriented schemes to all residents of J and K rapid infrastructure development including implementation of pmdp flagship schemes and iconic projects good governance and rule of law with equality of opportunity to all and rapid industrial and economic growth in all sectors with focus on incomes and employment a round the clock central control room has been established to ensure seamless coordination between various ministries of government of india administrative departments divisional and district administration and to facilitate all arrangements a separate whatsapp group has been set up to keep all concerned officers informed about all the required details on a real time basis Chief Secretary B V R Subramaniam has issued directions to the divisional commissioners and DCs for closely coordinating the visits of the dignitaries so that all events related to the visit are organized properly with participation of panchayat representatives and general public. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Girish Chandra Murmu has said that protection of land and jobs for the locals would be ensured keeping in view the interest of the union territory. He was interacting with councillors of Jammu Municipal Corporation JMC in Jammu. He said the non-implementation of 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments was hampering the complete empowerment of panchayati raj institutions and urban local bodies in the UT. The LG reiterated that the government is resolute in implementing the two constitutional amendments that would provide solutions to many problems and serve as a powerful tool for a true self-government. The National Investigation Agency has taken over a case involving DSP Devender Singh of the Jammu and Kashmir Police who was caught with three terrorists in Kashmir recently. After receiving orders from the Union Home Ministry, the NIA has re-registered the case and started the investigation. The police officer was arrested while ferrying three terrorists out of the valley. A NIA spokesman said that Devinder Singh posted as the DSP was arrested last weekend along with three Hizbul Mujahideen terrorists. The spokesman added Devinder Singh and three Hizbul Mujahideen terrorists were arrested along with arms and ammunition while they were traveling in a car near Kazigund on the national highway in South Kashmir. A case was registered by the JNK police in this regard. Lieutenant Governor Anil Bajal has granted power of detaining authority to the Delhi Police Commissioner under the National Security Act. A notification has been issued following the approval of the LG in this regard. According to the notification, the act allows preventive detention of an individual for months if the authorities feel that the individual is a threat to the national security, law and order. The Lieutenant Governor directed that during the period from 19 January to 18 April of this year, the Delhi Police Commissioner may also exercise the powers of detaining authority under the NSA Act. Delhi Police said it is a routine order that has been issued in every quarter and has nothing to do with the current situation. In Assam, Sarbananda Sonowal led Council of Ministers was expanded today by inducting two new faces, BJP legislators from Tinsukia. and Mahmara Sanjay Kishan and Jogain Mohan took oath as minister of state for independent charges governor Jagdish Mukhi administered the oath to them at Raj Bhavan in Guwahati the portfolios to the new ministers are likely to be announced by this evening 
There was vacancy in the Sonowal ministry after two ministers, Tapon Kumar Gogoi and Pallab Lochandas, resigned after they won the Lok Sabha elections. The state BJP president, Ranjit Kumar Das, is all set to get another term as the state party president. Formal announcement will be made later in the day. Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javrekar has said that electricity is a tool which empowers every individual and government is committed towards empowering every household with electricity connection. Bijli ghar mein aana keval suvidha nahi hai, garib ke liye ek jabardast empowerment hai, yeh hume samajna chahiye. Bijli is the main source of inspiration. Mr. Javrekar was addressing the 14th edition of Felix Rama, a conference for discussion on new trends and innovation for energy transition at Greater Noida today. He said Sobhagya Yojana has benefited 3.5 crore households through electrification. Mr. Javrekar also said that electric vehicles will be the future of the country. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our news on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. Prime Minister's message to students, teachers and parents. How to beat exam stress and come out with flying colors? Tune into AIR News at 11 a.m. on 20th January. Listen to Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. Students, teachers and parents across India are eagerly waiting for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's interaction program Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. The event will be held at Talkatora Stadium in New Delhi on the 20th of this month. Over 2000 students, parents and teachers will be participating from all over the country. Mr Modi will answer the questions and interact with selected students about how they can beat examination stress. In February 2018 during the first edition of Pariksha Pe Charcha program the prime minister spoke of the importance of anuspardha rather than pratispardha he said one should tr- only try to do better than what one had achieved earlier ye sare jitne khel jagat ke andar bade bade naam lekar ke aate hain koi unki degree puchta hai kya koi uska saathi kehta hai kya re mere class mein padhta tha bilkul dabbu tha lekin ab wo dabbu tha lekin tennis khelta tha to duniya mein naam kama ke le aata tha क्योंकि उसने अपनी ताकत पहचानी वो चल पड़ा अपने मित्रों की ताकत थी पढ़ाई में वो पीएचडी होंगे साइंटिस्ट होंगे वो उस दिशा में जाएंगे कभी कभार होता है खुद को न जानना ये समस्या का एक कारण होता है एक हमने जानना चाहिए अपने आप को दूसरा जब भी आप प्रतिस्पर्धा में उतरते हैं तो आपको एक तनाव महसूस करना पड़ता है Talking to AIR News, Vansh Agarwal, a student of Modern Vidya Niketan Faridabad, Haryana, said the program is beneficial for the students. जब प्रधानमंत्री ऐसी बात कहते हैं तो हर एक व्यक्ति पे असर पड़ता है बहुत मदद होती है उनकी टिप्स से इससे बहुत फायदा होता है और इस बार ट्वेंटी जैन दोबारा होने वाला है वो और अपने एक्सपीरियंसेज शेयर करेंगे और नई नई बातें बताएंगे जिसके लिए सभी बेसब्री से इंतजार कर रहे हैं Ved Prakash, a student of Jawahar Navodaya Vidyalaya Sitamadi Bihar said that the program has really helped him understand his actual strength. ये जो प्रधानमंत्री जी का जो परीक्षा पर चर्चा प्रोग्राम है इसके तहत हम लोग मोटिवेट हुए हैं और अधिक अंक प्राप्त करने के लिए भी मोटिवेट हुए हैं और हम लोग से साथ साथ हमारे पेरेंट्स और टीचर भी मोटिवेट हुए हैं. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India and the European Union (EU) are natural partners. He also reiterated India's commitment to deep and engagement with the bloc particularly in the fields of climate change trade and economic relations Prime Minister was interacting with the EU high representative Joseph Borrell Fontales who called on him in New Delhi yesterday the PM added that he's looking forward to a productive India EU summit in March this year he also recalled his earlier interactions with the leadership of the European Commission and European Council Mr Fontales conveyed that the leadership of the European Union is keenly looking forward to hosting the next India EU summit in Brussels Russia says it has started production of S400 long range surface to air missile systems for India and all five units will be delivered by 2025. Russian Deputy Chief of Mission Roman Babushkin also said that a contract will be finalized shortly for joint production of Kamov lightweight multi-role military helicopters for India. He was addressing a joint press conference with Russian ambassador Nikolai Kudashev in New Delhi yesterday. Babushkin said that Indian armed forces will receive the first batch of 5000 Kalashnikov rifles this year as well. These will be produced in India under a joint venture. 
National Security Advisor Rajiv Doval is on a day-long visit to Sri Lanka. He is scheduled to meet Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa during his visit and discuss key issues including economic and strategic cooperation. India has proposed several key projects in Sri Lanka including investment in Eastern Container Terminal in Colombo and Matala International Airport which may come up for discussion during these meetings. His visit comes soon after the visit of Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardena to India last week. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa is due to visit India early next week and the visit has huge significance in this regard. China's Wuhan city is in a grip of a new respiratory virus called novel coronavirus which has killed two people in China and sickened at least 45 persons including overseas cases with some new cases being detected in the city. The illness has been identified as a new strain for coronavirus which is the same family as the deadly severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS and a Middle East respiratory syndrome MERS. Most people with the infection are believed to have contracted it through exposure to animals at a market that sell seafood and meat in Wuhan. Our Beijing correspondent reports that Wuhan airport authorities have set up a temperature monitoring point at the entrance of Terminal 3 to check the temperature of all passengers entering the terminal so that travel of arrested persons may be averted. Pakistan Supreme Court has returned the petition of self-exiled former dictator Parvez Musharraf against his conviction and sentencing by a special tribunal with objection that he is not allowed to appeal without surrendering to the law. On Thursday, 74-year-old retired general now based in Dubai approached the court to challenge the ruling of the special tribunal that had handed him that sentence on charges of high treason. And now moving on to sports. <laughs> In the third Kelo India Youth Games in Guwahati, Uttar Pradesh won gold in mixed team event under 21 category in the 10 meter air pistol. A report. UP overpowered Delhi in an exciting final in mixed 10 meter air pistol event today. One of the UP team members, Devangshi Dhamma, who made her debut in Kelo India this year, has shared her experience with AIR. Me, Devangshi Dhamma, and my partner Shravan Kumar participated in the mixed team event in third Kelo India. We played well in the finals. We both were covering each other's shot and everything. Another shooter, Hilda Hazarika, who already won a silver in shooting, said that Kelo India is a great platform for the young athletes. I expected to have such a great competition because uh, we had uh, lots of uh, other international players such as uh, Shao Mane, Dhanush and all. Experience was amazing and I hope this experience helps me to perform in the upcoming event. In weightlifting, Ananda Patil from Maharashtra gains gold in 55 kg. In lawn bowls, Assam secured a bronze medal in boys 4 category. Medals will be decided today in swimming, wrestling, weightlifting, lawn bowls and cocoa events. With Sasank, Manas Patim Sarma, AR News, Guwahati. The dominant Vinesh Fogart won her first gold medal of the 2020 season at the Rome Ranking Series event in Rome last night. Teen sensation Ancho Malik settled for a silver and 57 kg competition. Vinesh down two top Chinese rivals on her way to the 53 kg gold medal bout in which she overpowered Ecuador's Luisa Elizabeth Waldberg 4 0. In tennis, Sonia Mirza and her Ukrainian partner Nadia Kichenok have won the women's doubles title of the WTA International Trophy at Hobart in Australia. In the finals today, they beat Shoi Peng and Shoi Zhang of China 6-4, 6-4. It is Sanya's 42nd WTA doubles title and the first since Brisbane International Trophy in 2007 with American partner Bisani Matek fans. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. 38 union ministers visiting Jammu and Kashmir in batches from today to disseminate information about government policies for overall development of the union territory. NIA registers case against DSP Davinder Singh of Jammu and Kashmir police. Two new ministers inducted in the Council of Ministers in Assam and in sports, Vinesh Pogat wins gold medal at the Rome Ranking Series event in Rome and Sanya Mirza and her Ukrainian partner Nadia Kichenok win the women's doubles title of the WTA International Trophy. For details of this stories and more, visit our News on AIR app and log on to our website newsonair.com. And with that, we end the Midday News.